Next we spoke to brother Marcus Osborne who was responsible for the food supply and the preparation. Marcus, uh, you're looking after the food arrangements here and the catering. I've just been speaking to uh, Alvin, who's looking after the drinks, and uh, he's given us a bit of information on that. But along with the drinks, I noticed there was a lot of watermelon going around to cool people down. Could you tell us how much watermelon we've been through? Yes, you'd think the water would quench their thirst, but uh, the watermelon is uh, unbelievable, the quantities that we have used. It's one and a half tonnes of melons that we've used so far, Mike. <laughs> a lot of watermelon, isn't it? certainly is. And I noticed that the food was uh, excellent, uh, Marcus. Uh, everyone was quite happy with it. And well fed. How many meals do you think we've had first sitting here? Well, on average, each meal we would be uh, feeding at least 300 people. Right, and uh, we're coping with that very well. The volunteers are supporting us very well. Uh, some of the figures, Marcus, on how much food we've been going through, perhaps. Uh, a lot of tea and coffee. How much milk have you, have you actually gone through? Yes, this is one of the things you don't think a lot about before you sit down to do it. You buy tea and coffee to provide for a big crowd, uh, but the milk itself, we've used uh, 250 litres. 250 litres and of course we've got a very nice uh, barbecue set up here for sausages and so on. How many sausages have we eaten? Yes, well, when you start multiplying it out, we've used 1,500 plus sausages and we've disguised them one way or another just to a bit of variety. Right, and the variety's been very uh, very much appreciated. What about bread, uh, Marcus? Bread, uh, bread too, Mike. You'd think after all those meals that you wouldn't have much use for bread or call on it, but the bread alone, that's uh, 500 plus loaves now. And rolls to go with that as well? And beside that bread, we've yeah. had rolls as well. So there's 500 odd rolls which right. have been made up into very tasty... Um, uh, sandwich or fillings as well. Good, and I hear there's uh, something like uh, 400 pounds of potatoes, uh, 80 odd chickens and uh, quite a lot of food. That's right, we've, right. Uh, we've made those to the best advantage. We've not only used the chicken, we've made chicken soup which has been very, very filling as well and uh, we've made these, all these things go to the best of uh, what we've been able to do. The building of these Kingdom Halls over the past three years has cost some 15 million dollars and there are some 50 million dollars worth of Kingdom Halls still waiting to be started. One major part of constructing a new hall is the landscaping and we spoke to brother Ron Carter about that. Well Ron, we have quite a big landscaping plan here for the, uh, the construction. Would you like to tell us, uh, especially a feature that I noticed was the fencing. Would you like to tell us uh, what sort of fencing, how much you've got and what sort of experience you had there? Well, the uh, fencing became a bit of a problem uh, in, in the beginning because of all the heavy tree roots, but the posts went in even though uh, at times we had to uh, cut around the trees to get it in there. Right, and what's the uh, length of fencing that went up? The first weekend of the quick build we put up 85 metres of fencing, or I should say Peter Coleman put up 85 metres of fencing along with his team. Uh, and the second weekend of the quick build they constructed 40 metres of fencing lying on the ground and then dug the holes and stood it all up and cemented it all in together. That was a great effort. I, I noticed it went up in, in no time no time at all. It was excellent. And uh, how many uh, plants have we got in our, in our plan, Ron? We've got approximately 700 plants of varying varieties, uh, from palms to ground cover. They, we have flowering trees in all of the garden beds, small flowering trees, that uh, will certainly uh, take away the bareness of the car park and will overcome the, prob the problem we had of removing the beautiful jacarandas. Yes, it was a shame to see those, Gabe, but I think we're going to have something uh, very nice to replace it with, aren't we? Yes, the trees that are in here are equally beautiful. They're smaller, but they are equally beautiful when they come out. Right, that'll make it nice and cool and pleasant to look at. And at the front of the hall, uh, I notice the landscape plan shows a nice uh, area of turf and a nice courtyard. Would you like to tell us a little about that? Well, the courtyard is in uh, a special paver, and while some people might have found the brickwork on the, on the uh, pathways very rough and might have noted it, but it is designed to be a, a rough uh, paved pathway. 
Right, that should be a nice, cool area for brothers to uh, to assemble in and to uh, meet outside the hall, perhaps for field service or something of that nature. That's the idea of it, is that the we hope to see the brothers meet in there for field service rather than meet in the Kingdom Hall. Next, we asked the hall's designer, Brother Volkard Zila, if he had encountered any problem in creating the design. Not serious problems as such, although uh, a little peculiar ones perhaps, in that we were dealing with a 27-year-old building which had to be incorporated in the new structure. Uh, it had to have a new face around it and that's a little unusual so uh, that created a few little problems. How do you feel now that the hall is nearing completion? Very good. I'm very pleased to see uh, Jehovah's blessing on the project to this extent. The old hall Brother Volkard spoke of is there. But if you hadn't seen it, you may not believe it. Finally, we spoke to the site coordinator, Brother Bob Johnston. Well, Alan, uh, the way things are going at the moment, all I can say is that everything's going really, really smooth. Uh, I'm very pleased with uh, what's happened to date. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of the project now and there's been no major hiccups, no problems of above what you'd normally expect on a site this size. You know, if you took a building site or a job this big and put it out in the world, you'd have all sorts of uh, uh, problems, but with the brothers and sisters working like they have done over the, uh, the last three months, no, it's been really great, no worries at all. Being basically a steel structure in and full with brickwork, uh, did you have uh, any problems, say, for instance, with the steelwork? No, we never had any, uh, any problems at that stage but you know we always look for the best price we can get so I was quoted a price around town uh, most buildings uh, structural buildings are worked out on a tonnage rate as you probably know and the price we were quoted was around $830 uh, per ton so uh, I have a, a very good friend and a brother up in in Longreach uh, Eric Horn I don't know if you know him or not but he looks after most of the uh, steel supplies for central Queensland and western Queensland. So I gave him a ring. I thought I'd just get a comparative price to see how we were going. And it just so happened that at the moment I rang him, the um, steel merchant, was, would you believe, in Longreach, was sitting across the desk from him. And so he said, well, just hang on a minute and I'll just see what sort of price we can get here. So he, we were quoted from there uh, $730 a ton. So that was $100 straight off and that was X Longreach. So I said, well, that's very good, Eric. Thanks very much. And he said, all right. He says, well, what you do? He says, you just order it down in Brisbane there and uh, we'll send the order up to Longreach. And then from Longreach, they can send it out to, uh, I can send it back to, Long, back to Rockhampton with an OK and uh, it'll get delivered to you in Brisbane. So it seemed a long way around, but everything seemed all right. Well, that night, Eric rang me back and said, well, listen, he says, I wasn't too happy uh, with that $730 a tonne. So I rang back and uh, told the manager that he might be able to do better than that, which he did, and we ended up getting it for around about $715 or $700 a tonne. So we can see that Jehovah must have been uh, looking after things right from the word go as far as the steel work went. So we ordered our steel in Brisbane. From there it was ordered in Longreach. Uh, from then it was rang back through to Rockhampton. From Rockhampton it was ordered back to Brisbane and delivered on site here at Jurak. Yes, brothers from so many areas have been involved in the construction of this hall. Bricklayers, carpenters, plasterers, plumbers, steel workers and many, many more from the roof to the hard-working brothers who laid this immense slab and paths. 
brothers and sisters from central Queensland, north Queensland, western Queensland, as well as northern New South Wales. And by 6pm on Sunday, the hall was virtually finished inside, and our little musical group had a practice run. Work continued outside in the grounds for a couple of hours. And finally, at 8 p.m. on Sunday the 25th of January 1987, the first meeting was held in the Durack Kingdom Hall. It was only a short meeting. Brothers related various experiences encountered during the building and the watchtower for the week was reviewed. With the completion of yet another Kingdom Hall, an even greater shout of praise goes out to Jehovah as the local congregation using this hall, Durak and Richlands, join with all their helpers in singing song number 93, Jehovah's Lovely Place of Worship.